On behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. Hallelujah. May God bless you this morning. Amen. Glory to God. This is a wonderful day that God has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We welcome you here this morning to our Sunday school lesson entitled Call to Prepare the Way. Amen. This is an outstanding lesson. Amen. And as you are called to prepare the way, amen, I pray and encourage you, amen, that when things come about, amen, don't be so quick, amen, to abandon the ship, amen. We had some technical difficulties this morning, amen, and the Lord put it in my spirit as we was going. I disconnected, amen, some of the AV equipment because we were having some difficulties, but maybe I should have just held on a little bit longer. Glory to God. This is a wonderful lesson, amen. We're coming out of Matthew, the third chapter, the first, amen, through the twelfth verse. If you'll... Go to your Bibles, amen, to Matthew, the third chapter, the first through the twelfth verse, amen. I am excited this morning because we're talking about being called to prepare the way, amen. I'm not just talking about any old way. I'm talking about being called to prepare the way as we read about John this morning, amen. Y'all join me in prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, amen, for this lesson, amen, Father God. We ask, Father God, that the hearers, Father God, only hear what it is that you have for them to hear this morning, amen, as to lead them and guide them closer to you, Father God, as I decrease, Father God, and myself, Father God, asking you, Father God, to take control. This is a wonderful lesson. I'm going to start with the first verse of the third chapter of Matthew. And it reads, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is, is at hand. hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the, and the same, same John had his, his raiment, raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about, about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around about Jordan. And, and were, were baptized, baptized of him in Jordan, Jordan confessing, confessing their, their sins. sins. Mm -hmm. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. He said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruit, fruit meet, meet for, for repentance. repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father, but for I, correction, our father, for I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And, and now also the axe is laid unto, unto the root of the, of the trees. trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thirty purge his floor, and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. We thank God, amen, for the scripture. We came from Matthew, the third chapter, the first through the twelfth verse, amen. T the title, Call to Prepare the way, amen, as we have talked about and discussed and taught on being called on many different occasions, amen. We talked about Jesus being called uh, as the Savior, glory to God, of the world. We find out Noah was called, we find out to build a ship, glory to God. We talked about being called, Abraham being called, we said, to leave his home uh -huh, for a strange land. I'm talking about 
to be called. Uh, we talked about David being called to be king, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Our focus uh -huh, on called is premised this morning on the origin of the call, being called by God for a special service. I said to be called by God for a special service. There's a lot of people calling you all the time, but I'm talking about to be called by God for a special service. Amen. John, the first chapter in the sixth verse, says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Glory to God. I'm talking about being called by God. I'm talking about being sent by the Father. Amen. For a special purpose. When we look at our title this morning, it says to prepare, prepare to make ready. Amen. We see that John was called, was sent by God to make ready. Amen. We see here a way we're talking about the direction. Amen. He was supposed to make ready. Amen. To shed some light. Amen. In a dark, dark world. Amen. We find out he was called to prepare. Amen. To make ready. Amen. To make way. Amen. For Christ. Amen. We see here our author this morning, Matthew, Jesus' disciple. We're talking about the tax collector. Glory to God. Uh -huh. Jesus called him. We're talking about the apostle to follow him. Glory to God. And we know in Matthew, the ninth chapter, the ninth verse, it says, And Jesus passed forth from hence. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt, it said, of custom. And he said to him, follow me. He called him and said, follow me, amen, and treated him to follow me. And the Bible tells me, and he arose and followed him, amen. I'm talking about to be called by God, amen, for a special purpose. Can you see where Matthew was called, amen, by Jesus, amen? For God's purpose, his own will for a special purpose, amen, as we read, amen, today for our learning, amen, and our application, glory to God. We see here he was called, amen. Have you been called, amen? Amen, glory to God. And did you arise and choose to follow, glory to God. We see here being called, amen, called to prepare the way for Christ, where John prepared the way for Christ Jesus prepares the way of access into the direct presence of God. Amen. We see John, you know, he called, he paved the way, you know, he, he shed some light, amen, as Christ, you know, came on the scene in the physical, we see here. But we know that not only did for us, we see Jesus, he paved the way for us, amen, in his death and his resurrection, amen, that we may be in right relationship with the Father, amen. This is a wonderful chapter, amen. If you so choose to follow me, amen, follow him, Jesus Christ, amen. If you choose to follow him, for we know John 14 and 6 that I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, glory to God. So we see Jesus, he paved the way of access into the direct presence of God. Amen. Glory to God. This is a wonderful thing. I'm talking about paving the way. Amen. Somebody paved the way. Somebody has to pave the way. Amen. Somebody has, you know, to, to, to prepare things. Amen. And get things in order. Amen. We're going to stay right there for a minute. I'm talking about preparation. Glory to God. As we go into this lesson this morning to prepare. Glory to God. This morning we had to prepare, amen, and get things ready, glory to God, uh, to broadcast, amen. Uh, when you were preparing uh, for your Christmas dinner, hey, glory to God, you prepared, amen, you prepared things. You had to, some of y'all was getting the dressing and y'all was cooking your cornbread and cutting up your celery. You were preparing uh -huh, for something, amen, preparing the way, amen. We have to prepare for Christ's return, glory to God, amen. Prepare, call to prepare. We are all called to prepare first and foremost to prepare ourselves, amen, for the coming of Christ, glory to God. We must prepare ourselves. I'm talking about in preparing ourselves, we must put off the old man, amen, glory to God. Put off our old ways, amen. Put off our old thoughts, our old mindset. We have to prepare, amen. 
called to prepare. We've all been called to prepare the way. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, that we may be a light, amen, that we may be the salt of the earth, amen, that a man or woman may see us as light, amen. I'm talking about through Christ Jesus, amen, not in yourself. We're going to move on, amen. I want to get excited this morning about the word, Matthew, the third chapter in the first verse, amen. We're going to cover and explore Matthew, the third chapter in the first verse, and it says, in those days. Somebody said, what days, amen. Glory to God. Matthew, the second chapter, the 23rd verse is those days where Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, we see, and he came and he dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be what fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called the Nazarene. I'm talking about in those days, amen, where they dwelt in a city called Nazareth, amen. This is a wonderful lesson. You can reference Isaiah, the 11th chapter, the first verse, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, uh -huh, and a branch shall grow out uh, of his roots, amen, so as we see Jesus, amen, amen, coming on the scene, amen. We see God, we see the character, we see the presence, we see the spirit of God, amen, right here in the flesh. It's a wonderful thing. In those days, amen, we see came John the Baptist, amen. Somebody say, who is John the Baptist, amen? Uh, so, you know what I'm saying? Who was John the Baptist? I'm talking about either John the Baptist was a prophet, amen. John the Baptist was a teacher, glory to God. One who was, we know, called by God, glory to God. Um, born, mm -hmm, Zachariah, a priest, and his wife, Elizabeth, uh -huh, we know that he was born uh -huh, of Zachariah, a priest, and his wife, Elizabeth, and he grew to manhood in the wilderness of Judea, amen. We're going to talk a little bit about the wilderness, amen. He, he grew up in the wilderness of Judea, glory to God. You know, some of us grew up in a lot of nice places and some of us grew up in some places where it wasn't so nice. I'm talking about when you were coming up and reared up. But likewise, some of us from a figurative and a spiritual standpoint, we find ourselves, regardless where we physically grew up, found ourselves in the wilderness of our lives, amen. We find ourselves in the wilderness because see in the wilderness we find out the wilderness a lot of times it represents an area, a place, a space, and a time where it is that this is not a popular time or not a popular place to be. This is where you don't have all the amenities of life, glory to God. I'm talking about I'm talking about a wilderness, I'm talking about experience, amen. This is when things are not going so well, amen. I'm talking about a wilderness experience when things might not be as abundant as they would be in other times. He grew up in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking about not just a physical wilderness, or not just a literal wilderness, but I'm also talking about this morning, we're talking about figuratively speaking, a spiritual wilderness, amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. How many of y'all know that until you receive Jesus Christ, amen, as your Lord and Savior, amen. You just walk around in the wilderness, just barren, amen. Say, so we all have to receive Jesus, amen, as our Lord and Savior. But we see here he was in the wilderness, glory to God. And I love it here as we continue to read about John the Baptist. Luke, the first chapter in the 80th verse, it tells me, And the child grew and waxed strong in Spirit, the Bible tells me, and was in the desert till the days of what? His showing unto Israel. Uh -huh. John received the call from God while in the wilderness. Luke, the third chapter, in the second verse, it tells me, it says, And us and Sapphires, being the high priest, the word of God, came unto John, the son of what? Zacharias, in the wilderness. So while he was in the wilderness, amen, and while some of us was in our wilderness, we know the word of God could, might have come to you, amen. The word of God came to me when I was in my wilderness, glory to God. When things were barren, amen, when things just weren't going the way that I thought they should go, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Talking about John receives the call from God while in the wilderness, amen. But it says in the first verse, it says, in those days came John the Baptist preaching, amen. Uh -huh. Preaching means to herald, to proclaim, amen. Somebody said, what was he proclaiming? Glory to God, amen. There's a lot of people preaching a lot of things, proclaiming a lot of things. But the question is, what was he 
proclaiming glory to God. Amen. Proclaiming the word of God. Amen. Preaching what the word of God. Luke 3 and 2 shows us a man called by God for a special service. Amen. Unto God. Amen. Malachi 4 and 5. I love it. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. We can assimilate like uh, likeness between Elijah's and John's time in the wilderness, but more focusing on the purpose and linkage. I say we can assimilate a likeness between the two, but we want to focus more on the purpose and the linkage. And that purpose and the linkage is God himself, glory to God. That's what we want to focus, amen. Wilderness and an uninhabited, a desert like place, amen. Glory to God. Let's read on, amen, to the second verse, amen. The second verse, I asked, what was he preaching, amen? Amen, the same thing that we should be preaching today, amen. The same thing that we should be teaching today, amen. And we can learn some things, amen, about the status and character, glory to God, of John. We can learn some things about the status and character of Jesus Christ, amen, when he was on the scene. We can learn some things about Paul, amen, and his status and his character, amen, where it is that we're concerned, amen, with a whole lot of principles and a whole lot of things, amen, we see here. He was focused, glory to God, on one thing, amen, glory to God, and saying, repent, glory to God, ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, amen. He was focusing, amen, on saving souls, amen. This is beyond a ritualistic act, amen. This is beyond, amen, just a temporal setting, amen, of having some coffee, amen, in the foyer area, amen, having dinners, amen. He was concerned with souls, amen, being saved, amen. And there's only one way, amen, for a soul to be saved, amen, that I believe, and that's that you repent, amen, confess, amen, believe in your heart. You know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that God raised him from the dead, amen. I'm talking about, glory to God, saving souls. Mm -hmm. We see here uh, preaching. I'm talking about a public proclamation, amen. I'm talking about a public proclamation, amen. A lot of times we come up with titles, amen. And that's why if you notice, I take the lesson, I always try to draw out from whatever the title says, some spirituality in the context of the scripture, amen, because that is what we should be teaching, glory to God, amen. Because see, the word falls on all of us the same, amen, glory to God, amen. The word never changes. I mean, we might need to change, but the word don't change, amen. It meant what it meant yesterday, and it's going to mean the same thing tomorrow, amen. I don't get, a chance, get the, the, the what say, authority, amen, to put my twist on it, amen. It's whatever God says it is, amen. We see here that he was proclaiming, amen, the word of God, that they should repent, amen. What does it mean to repent, amen, amen. Sunday school, what does it mean to repent, amen, because it's more than just lip service, amen, I'm talking about in repenting. You ever heard somebody say that, you know, I really didn't mean that. You know, I'm sorry. You know, please forgive me, you know. You know, sometimes they don't really mean it. They just say things, amen. They just, it's more than just an act. It's more than just a ritualistic, amen, setting where it is that you come in and it's just, it looks like a spirit. No, I'm talking about the heart right now, glory to God. I'm talking about true repentance, amen. I'm talking about a true changing of the mind, amen, because when your mind is made up and you truly change, amen, we see uh -huh, that your actions will change, the things that you desire will change, amen, and it might not all come at once, amen, but because you love the Lord, you will see an increased perfection of who you are in the Lord, amen, for his purpose, amen, Lord of God, mm -hmm. We see here to repent, to have a changed mind, to think again, amen. Amen, some of us need to think again. I'm talking about that initial thought, amen, that comes to your mind. I'm talking about that sinful nature. I'm talking about that old man, that old man, that old woman that says, hey, look, if she say something to me one more time, amen. I'm talking about to think again, amen. 
Like, you know what I mean? It's like, look, if this, oh, what? I, you, you, I, you know, I, I just got to deal with this. Uh huh. Yeah. As a to think again, amen. Glory to God. Don't get set up, amen. <laughs> the devil will set you up if you're mindful. I'm talking about to repent, amen. To have a changed mind and a changed heart, glory to God. I'm talking about one like the Lord, amen, because of the spirit of God that resides in you. Not because of who you are, amen. You couldn't save yourself, glory to God, and you can't keep yourself, amen. We all need the Holy Ghost, amen. We see here and saying, repent, change your mind, change your ways, amen. Why is it, this is a question, so hard for people to sometimes change their ways. What are some of the things that prevent people from changing their mind, the way they think, and the things that they do? What are some of the things that prevent and what are some of the things that we call hinder people from changing their minds from truly changing the way and the things they do when you say changing their mind you talking about as far as changing their lifestyle or, or coming to, when you say change are you talking about in, in a relationship to coming to Christ changing their mind in the context as a result or I say, I say a, a change in lifestyle as a result of a change in mind um, to include coming to Christ I believe uh, some of the things that hinder us is the tug of war that's within us. Uh, when I talk about the tug of war, I go back to Romans 7 mm -hmm. when Paul was talking there and he said that uh, for that which he do, he, he allowed not for what he would, he did not and that what he hated, he ended up doing. Some of the things that causes us is this internal struggles of things that we have not totally, I don't use that word totally, let go. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we find ourselves struggling, you know, and then I remind it also um, with, with, when Paul talked about Demas mm -hmm. and in 2 uh, Timothy 4 and, and 10, it said, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world and is departed unto death. So the things that causes us not to do the, um, to totally surrender and uh, change our heart and our mind and our soul is having love for the present world. The Bible tells us to love not the world, neither things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in this world, in the world, is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's not the Father, but of the world. You know, so those are the things that can hinder us from changing and, and confessing uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And the other scripture, I'm going to turn back to the other scripture to come to mind is in Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. You know, it talks about a man, the Ethiopian can't change his skin. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't change ourselves. We try to change ourselves, but we can't change ourselves, you know, and mm -hmm. everything else. And so. You say we try to change ourselves? What do you mean by that? We try to change ourselves, amen. Well, what I mean by that is. Um, when, when we you try to save ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I remember before I got saved, um, I I told myself when I left uh, Fort Worth, California, I wasn't going to do any more drugs, you know. I'm going to start over. I was try to do. I was going to try to do a new uh, turn over a new leaf, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and but when I got over to Germany, you know, I found out the same type of people I was hanging out with. In Fort or California was over in Germany, you know. So that goes back to the scripture I was uh, uh, referring to earlier. Can the Ethiopian change his skin, or the leper his spot? Then may you also do good that are accustomed doing evil of our own. We can't do anything. We can't change ourselves, you know. We can't even change one strand of hair on our head. So it wasn't you just know. enough to go to a different location. No, it wasn't just enough well, to wasn't go just to another enough location. to relocate. Some people think if I just relocate and go to another location. You the same person, amen. You got to have a changed mind, amen. You you got to want to change. It doesn't matter where, where you are, amen. You have to want to change, glory to God. Going to another location is not gonna change you, amen. I love it, I love it. It's so wonderful as you talk in some of the scripture that came to mind, First John, the second chapter, the 15th, glory to God, verse, I'll start reading, it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. You know, we find out, as I heard you speaking, Pastor, that a lot of time we find out 
that it's hard for people to change or, or, you know, to change their ways and stop thinking the way they think because they love the world. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, see, they are without love. He's going to tell you, say, oh, I love. No, you're without love. You might love, but you don't love. Because the Bible tells me the love of the Father is not in him. You don't have to like it. Read the scripture. First John, second chapter, and the 15th verse. It tells me that the love of the Father, I ain't say your love. I'm talking about the love of the Father. I'm talking about the love of God is not in him or her. For all that is in the world, we find out the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You know what I'm talking about? Some folks got like an eye problem. You know what I'm talking about? You know, they always got something in their eye. You know what I'm saying? Every time, you know what I'm saying? They see Jimmy walk by or they see Susie walk by, they got something in their eye. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Talking about the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. Uh-huh. And the pride of life. Uh-huh. Glory to God. They, they, like they need glasses. They don't need glasses. Amen. Uh, they need another pair of glasses, uh huh. They need some, you know, we call it some, those those glasses that come from God. And saying the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So if you want to abide forever, so it's not just doom and gloom, amen. We're gonna call it like it is. But if you want to abide forever, amen, if you want to be restored, amen, to a, a rightful state in the eyes of God, amen, you have to receive Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. as your Lord and Savior. Uh -huh. As we continue to talk here and about, we're here in the, still in the second verse and saying, repent, uh -huh. ye for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. What are we talking about the kingdom of heaven? We're we talking about the eternal kingdom of God, the realm in which God's will is fulfilled. Amen. It's at hand. Amen. Jesus, a hey, glory to God, is here. Amen. It is wonderful. Amen. When we see it, we see heaven. We're talking about God's adobe. Amen. Glory to God. God's presence. Amen. Last time I checked, is that the Holy Spirit lives in you and I. Glory to God. Amen. We see it's at hand. Amen. It's before you. Amen. To make near, i.e., approach. Amen. It says to be at hand. We see Jesus, the Savior of the world is mm -hmm, near, is approaching. How many of y'all know that Jesus is coming back? <coughs> yep, how many of you know that Jesus is coming back? As we read about God mm -hmm, paving the way for Jesus on earth mm -hmm, through John the Baptist, so he continues to pave the way through us for Jesus' return, amen. That was key words. And I took my time when I would say, as we see how God paved the way, amen, amen, for Jesus on earth, because we know that God called John, amen, amen, the Bible tells me, uh, for his purpose. So he continues to pave the way uh -huh, through us for Jesus' return. Mark, the 13th chapter, and the 32nd verse says, but of that day, and that hour, no man, it says, not, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Nobody knows when Jesus is going to return, amen, glory to God. That's why we should live our lives every day, amen, every moment, amen, every second, glory to God, like it's the last second, glory to God, like it's the last moment, amen. As I asked the question earlier, you know, what are some of the things that hinder, amen, people from changing their mind, amen, what are some of the things that prevent them? A lot of times we think that we have all the time in the world, amen, there's thousands of people in this world just during this time of pandemic that thought they might have had a year, five years, ten years. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, I've heard of some folks, you know, being around and, and, you know, within seven days, amen, or five days or three days, glory to God. Say, some of us, we think that we have all the time in the world, amen. How many of y'all know the only thing you have is right now, glory to God. You have right now to get it right with God, amen. You have right this moment to get it right 
with the Father. Some of us are saying, that, oh, I'm too young for that right now. Amen. You have right, you right now, you have an opportunity to get it right with the Father. It doesn't matter about your age. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you're 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. It doesn't matter whether you're 60. You have right now to get it right with the Father. Amen. Get it right with the Father. Amen. Some of us think that we have all the time in the world. Amen. We got to run for Jesus, amen, like it's our last moment, amen. Joel 1 and 6, for the nation has come upon my hand, my, upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he that, what, cheek teeth of a great lion. For the Lord says, as Joel 1 and 14 through 16, it says, sanctify ye a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord, your God, and cry unto the Lord. Oh, this is for somebody, man. I had to put it in here. I, this, this, this God inserted this. You'll be okay. This in there, and this is His word. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Is not the meat cut off before your eyes, ye joy and gladness from the house of your God? Amen. Glory to God. We have to turn, amen. We need to repent, amen. We have to repent, glory to God, from the heart, amen. Turn from the things that we're doing, amen, the ritualistic things that we're doing, amen. We got to return, amen, to the true love of God, amen. Let's go on to the third verse. For this is he that was spoken mm -hmm, of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of the one crying in the wilderness says, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Amen. We see here the prophet Isaiah. Amen. Glory to God. We know it means the salvation of the Jehovah. Isaiah 1 and 1 says, The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah and Jotham and Ahaz and Hezekiah, king of Judah. Isaiah was a man of humble, mm -hmm, of humble, of a humble state, I find. His wife was a prophetess. Isaiah 8 and 3 says, And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, call his name, glory to God. We see here that even his wife, glory to God, was a prophetess. Crying in the wilderness. Uh -huh. This scene literally, figuratively, and spiritually, we see here a place the messenger of God uh -huh, would proclaim the word of God. And this was a place, this wasn't some big, great synagogue. Isn't this amazing? So we see here, and, and what was intriguing to me here is that he's proclaiming the word of God in the wilderness. That means, you know, how many people are just desperate to go to the wilderness? How many people would just show up to church, amen, if we had church in the middle of the woods? Come on now, y'all hear me right now. Y'all get quiet on me now. How many of y'all would just show up, amen, to church and we just get a bullhorn and go out, you know, and start preaching and proclaiming the word of God in the middle, middle of the wilderness? Glory to God. Amen. We got to get back right with God, amen. We've gotten so focused on everything that's not important because what intrigued me is that he's in the wilderness proclaiming the word of God. That means they had to make an effort. Amen. They had to make a conscious effort. Amen. This wasn't just, you know, rolling out of the bed and rolling over and come sitting down and in the nice heat and sitting down in the nice air condition on the plush seats. Amen. This wasn't one of those things where you had got your water. Y'all know I got some water up here and, uh, you know, it passing it out. You come in and the ushers giving you fans and everything. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We've got so focused. Or what's not important? We see here, what's the, I'm talking about what is the most important issue here that I'm bringing up? It's the heart. I can see the heart of the people, amen. 
They had to lay aside some things, glory to God. They had to want this. Amen. This now they had to who who you know who just get up and go out to the wilderness, amen. Who just, you know, no, nah, they might no. Nah. No, they ain't, they ain't got no air conditioning over there. It's be it be hot in there. Y'all know how we get oh like, oh man, it's it's too cold in there. Like, mm 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 I got to drive too far. That's too far for me to drive. Huh? I need something a little closer, a little more convenient. Amen. That God's inconvenience in us. Glory to God. But we see here, he was proclaiming the word of God in the wilderness. Man, that was deep to me. Amen. I'm sorry. I'm going to move on. It was, and he's in the wilderness proclaiming the word of God. Mm, 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 mm. We see here crying in the wilderness. Says, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. All right, call to put out of the way whatever would obstruct his, per, his progress and hinder his complete triumph. I'm talking about a call to put away those things that will hinder us. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. From doing that which God called us to do. I love Luke, the third chapter, and the fifth through the sixth verse. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain shall, every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation, it says, of God. Uh -huh, we tell we see here the prophet here, the glory to God. This is wonderful. And we know the prophet was only supposed to proclaim that which was from God. I'm not talking about the false prophet. I'm talking about God's prophets. Glory to God. Luke 1 and 7 it says, As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. He said, which has been since the world began. Mm -hmm. Matthew 13 and 57. And they were offended in him because Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. Amen. We find out that even today we find out prophetically, we find out that God uses whomever he chooses to use through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't eliminate Jesus. You don't have to like it. You can't you say there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. Amen. He is saying you have your prophetic moments through Jesus Christ, amen, or calling. We find out, but it's through Jesus, amen. God chooses to give his son as a means of a perpetual relationship and communication. Now all that are of God must be of the son. Amen. I was like, yeah, all that are of God must be of the son. Not, you know, can be, not might be, not should be. All that are of God must be of the Son. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a wonderful lesson. Called to prepare the way. Because we see Jesus prepare the way for us to be back in right relationship with the Father. Amen. And he continues to use us. Amen. I mean, being a part of him, being a part of the body of Christ, he can continue to use us to pave the way, amen, to lead others, amen, amen, back to be in right relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. It says in the fourth verse, it says, And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair mm -hmm, and leather and griddle. I'm talking about his belt, you know what I'm saying? About his loins. And his meat was locusts. And wild honey. This intrigued me here because when I looked at this, and I kind of hinted toward it earlier as I began, I was getting a little ahead of myself as I was studying the lesson. It was very intriguing that one that he's in the wilderness and he's preparing a way for Jesus Christ in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. Listen, he's preparing the way for Jesus Christ in the wilderness. Some folks might think that, man, that, you, know, you can't reach everybody. <laughs> amen, amen. Some people think, oh, this is too small. What I'm trying to say here, you say we see here, just do what God called you to do in the time and space that God called you to do it. Don't get too big for your britches, glory to God. Wherever God has you proclaiming the word, 
for that time and for that purpose, for that season, know that it, the reason is only for God and God himself. And whoever it is, amen, if they'll go in the wilderness in the middle of the woods, amen, and seek out, amen, salvation, amen, and seek out baptism, amen, we see that they could see themselves, amen, as being inadequate, glory to God. We see if they were good, amen, glory to just do what God called you to do. Just be content. Glory to God. Sometimes we're just so ungrateful. Amen. You know what I'm saying? We just, you know, we're not content with anything. We're not satisfied with anything. We just say thank you, Lord. You know, for whatever it is. Glory to God. But as I read this lesson this morning, we see here that and his meat was locusts. And I say this is a poor man's food. We focus, as I say, over 80% of the stuff I right hear, glory to God, you know, so you go on YouTube, you go on the TV, every time I turn around, there's prosperity, preaching and teaching, and preaching and tithes and all this other stuff. It's like, man, it's, it, it, money's okay, but we just got carried away with it. We live for it, breathe it, that's all we think about, day and night. Hey man, what about souls being saved? What about repentance? And we teach about hell just as much as we teach about money. Glory to God. I think we'll be a lot better off. Glory to God. When folks understand that there's a hell that's real. Amen. Some folks just think they can buy their way out of it nowadays. Hell is real. We must repent. Each and every one of us. And it has to be a heartfelt repentance. Glory to God. This is a poor man's food. I'm looking at his character. I'm looking at the situation, the space, and where it is. This man is at proclaiming and paving the way for Jesus Christ. And those that chose to seek him out. Locusts. Man, and wild honey. Leviticus 11 and 22 says, Even these of them ye may eat the locusts after his kind, and was the ball locusts after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. Glory to God. And as I was making notes, I say, Man, he's in the wilderness. Um, he, his clothes got camel's hair. I'm looking, and he's eating locusts. Huh? We got folks trying to carry people in. You got so what we call coachified. I know I just made that word up. People want to carry you in on a, on, on, on a king's chair and do all of this stuff. It's not that we shouldn't have nice things. That's not my point. I'm talking about the heart and what we find our minds at the majority of the time. Glory to God. As I write, just as we read about Jesus, Isaiah, Elijah, and John, these great representations of God did not seek the lavish ends that most would lead you to believe is the essence and reward of spiritual living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Money can't save you, no matter how much you have mm -hmm, or give, but Jesus can. Let me say it one more time. The things of this world cannot save you, no matter what your possession is, amen, no matter how much of it you have, amen, no matter how big the church you go to, amen, no matter how much money you have in your bank, amen, no matter how many cars you have, no how big your house is, no matter how many shoes, pair of shoes you have, it does not, it can not save you, but Jesus can, mm -hmm. we so stuck on principles that lack eternal relevance, but more substantiate carnality, I'm going to say it one more time. We're stuck on principles that lack eternal relevance, but more substantiate carnality. The fifth verse says, Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the reign around about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Oh, man. Man, I'm looking. Man, they were confessing their sins. Glory to God. That means they had to recognize, they had to come to the conclusion that I ain't right. Something about me needs to change. Amen. 
each and every one of us, amen, that are born again, at some point, you had to come to the conclusion that just, hey, look, the way you were living, your current state wasn't enough. You had to come to the conclusion, you had to admit that there was something greater than yourself that you had to seek out, and that was Jesus Christ. Each and every one of us <clears throat> had to come to that conclusion, amen, if you're truly born again. I didn't say that you just show up 52 weeks out of the year. I didn't say up you just have ritualistic practices and things that you're doing. I'm talking about those that are truly born again. You had to come to the conclusion in your heart and your mind, and it be sincere, amen, that you need Jesus Christ each and every day of the life that he's given you, amen, to, amen, accomplish whatever it is that the Father has for you to do. We all had to come to that conclusion. The seventh verse says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. Isn't it amazing, amen? Isn't it amazing? I'm looking. So now remember we talked about he's in the woods, amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Preaching repentance, amen. Glory to God. So what I'm telling you is, amen, you don't have to broadcast it. When you're doing the things that God has called you to do, amen, you'll get folks' attention, amen. Amen. They'll, hey, look, they'll come out, but everybody who comes out, and I had a man tell me one, said, be mindful about the people that come around. Because everybody that comes around, amen, a lot of times people pose questions, you know, you know, they, they trip you up. <laughs> they, they pose, you know, you know they did it to Jesus on many occasions, amen. They got these little, what I call trivial questions, you know, you know, about stuff. They're not very well studied, but they got these little trivial questions. They know just enough, amen, to ask them little, you know, in themselves, amen. But, Pastor, I know you got a wonderful saying. I love it. But it's one thing about God, amen. See, God, uh-huh. See, God can identify. See, God knows what they say, a black hat <laughs> on a black rock, <laughs> At midnight, amen, glory to God. You can fool man some of the time, but you can't fool God none of the time, amen. We find here that the Pharisees, it says, and the Sadducees. We see the Pharisees, we call it strict keepers of the law. Uh -huh. We see that, you know, now they are. So what's going on? Start, don't start getting too much attention. Uh -huh. He's like, what's it? He's starting to change people's mind, amen. You know what I'm saying? You're you trying to draw them away. What, what's going on? Amen. We see here the strict keepers of the law. John, the 14th chapter, the 6th verse says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but uh -huh, by me. We have to spend less time because in a lot of cases, sometimes we see here as I look is very discerning sometimes you turn the TV on we you spend more time teaching how to be outwardly we spend more time teaching how to be outwardly law-abiding citizens of the local church than a friend who has a true relationship with God uh -huh, through the Son spend more time allowing the church to live in and through you. I encourage you to spend more time allowing the church, I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to live in and through you. Glory to God. For you are blessed, amen, that you may be a blessing. See, the Pharisees could have seen themselves at the same time as being self-righteous, we know from our reading and our study. Because, you're know, like, look, look, we, we ain't like them, we ain't, we, ain't this, we ain't like them old folks over there. You say, you know, say, we, we don't do that. You don't know what I'm talking about. We ain't, we ain't like the Gentiles. Uh -huh. You know, when people get a little self-righteous. Uh -huh. So you find out sometimes you start, you see things going on and folks, you know, and they, they, people get a little self-righteous. Don't get self-righteous. Amen. We all need Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. We all need Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Who's going to say they don't need Jesus? Amen. <laughs> I leave politics alone. Law abiding citizens, Luke 18 and 9. And he spake his parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the Jews. Uh -huh. we some, of these, some, of these, some of these folks, you know, they got a little self righteous, amen, and despised others, amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some folks, you know, they've been in the church for a whole two days, and now all of a sudden they wanted to show up tomorrow. 
You know what I'm saying? Now you better than them. Don't, don't, don't give me a record about how long. Maintain the race. Glory to God. To the end. Amen. No little eyes and big U's. Amen. It's not about that. You know, they want to bring what I call a secular mindset that sides you up. Jesus is who he is. The same every day. And the last time I checked, the same Holy Spirit is in you is in me. Amen. If you're serving the same Jesus that I'm serving. Sadducees, we see here, the righteous, a Jewish religious and political party during the time of Christ, what we call drawn from the wealthy, wealthy, usually priests, uh -huh, dominated the Sanhedrin, uh -huh, accepted only the Pentateuch, rejected doctrine of resurrection and the existence of, of angels. So we see here the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and we know that there was a lot of rebuke from Jesus on the Pharisees, on Sadducees and the lawyers and things of that nature. But we see here Acts, the 23rd chapter in the 8th verse, for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. <laughs> Amen. A lot of folks will come around as we read the scripture here and we see here, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, amen, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Glory to God. We find that a lot of folks, everybody who come around, they don't really come around because they really love you, amen. A lot of people come around even when, even when they dress just like you, amen. They don't really come around. They got a game for you. A lot of times they ask inquisitive questions. They'll smile at you or whatever the case may be. But everybody that come around don't come around because they really love you, amen. The eighth verse says, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance, amen. Can the Sunday school class talk to me, amen. Give me some input, amen, on this scripture. Bring forth therefore fruits for repentance. Repentance, Amen. I want to talk about. It. I want to Sunday school class talk a little bit about verse eight, the third chapter. As we're coming off the seventh verse, I'm gonna read the seventh and end with the eighth. And if someone, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, "O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come?" A verse, bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance, Amen. In other words, God didn't want lip service. Uh, many times throughout the scripture we find that he said, you are me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Come on now. So when he said, bring, me, bring forth fruit that was meat, that was suitable, that was acceptable, God wasn't looking for a bunch of lip service again. Amen, amen. We see here John, we see the Bible that so showed us where he was gifted. You see here the Holy Spirit, amen. Being able to see, we're calling, and having the knowledge of the heart, amen, the ill heart of man. As Pastor, I love it as you say, he's not just looking for lip service, amen. It's not a just about lip service, glory to God. It's about us loving God, confessing, amen, repenting, amen, from the heart, amen. It's beyond lip service, amen. Very elegant. Thank you, Pastor. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Uh -huh. Don't tell me about, you know, how long you've been coming. You know, you've been, I've been saved since I was 15. All right, good. I got it. You know, as I got it. For God's service, we find him. Like, you know, and I show up every day and I'm on five committees. I got it. I hear you. You say, what? Well, <laughs> And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our... My point is, don't become self-righteous, glory to God. For I say unto you that God is able to, of these stones, to raise up children unto Abraham. Because we know that, we see here, so let's talk about this scripture. We see here where, you know, the Jews, they didn't see themselves as sinners like the Gentiles. So they discriminately seen themselves as being righteous, unlike the heathen, glory to God. Mm -hmm. No need really for change of repentance in that matter because, you know, they some of them have become what we call self-righteous. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 4 and 14 says, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. 
How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Amen. We have to put away vain thoughts of self-righteousness. Glory to God. We have to put off vain thoughts of self-righteousness. Amen. And adopt the mind of Christ. Amen. In all that we do. Mm -hmm. Get over yourself. Uh -huh. And vain delusions that God stands in need of you. If you all were to perish, God could raise a seed of Abraham. The axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth forth good fruit mm -hmm, is honed down. Bring, bring, not, hold on, correction here. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not, one word changes. That's why we can't add or take away. One word changes the meaning of the scripture. That ain't read right. There's a word somewhere. Uh -huh. Not forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Amen. That's why I talk about, you know, we talk about so many things. We talk about so many principles and ideas. But nobody's talking about Jesus returning. Amen. Nobody's talking about repenting. Amen. And hell is real. Amen. And now, we said it now and even now, already. Amen. The axe is laid and we find life. You know what I'm saying? Act. See, we say even now. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Ready to strike. Amen. And none of us, amen, know the hour, nor the day, nor the time. Not even the angels. Glory to God. I love it here. The 11th verse we're going to go on says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Listen, so he's in the wilderness. Amen. We see here. He said, man, he said, the one that come after me, listen, the one that comes after me is mightier than I. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you are, the one, amen, that's coming after us, after us amen, is mightier, glory to God, than you, amen, whose shoes we are not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. It doesn't matter who you are, glory to God. It was only one, glory to God, worthy, glory to God. We couldn't save ourselves. Mark 1 and 7, and preach saying, there cometh one mightier than I after me, that latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Luke <laughs> 3 and 16, amen. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, that latches of those sh whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, amen. I might be able to sprinkle some water on you, amen. Pastor can sprinkle some water on you, amen. You wherever you at, amen. But I'm talking about the one that will baptize you, glory to God, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I'm talking about one that will purge you, glory to God, from the inside out, not from the outside in. <laughs> Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff uh -huh, with unquenchable fire. I began to think about, as we talked about, harvest time, amen. There's going to be a time, amen, glory to God, where there will be a separation, glory to God. We'll see the visible church as a flesh and throat, uh, flesh and throat floor. Matthew 13 and 30 it says, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. Mm -hmm. But gather the wheat until my barn. Glory to God. Glory to God. Where do you want to be? <laughs> Amen. This is a wonderful lesson here. Call to prepare the way. Amen. We see here in our lesson that John was called to prepare the way, amen, for Jesus Christ, amen. And in preparing the way for Jesus Christ and for prophecy to be fulfilled, we know the end story where it is that Jesus died, glory to God. He shed his blood for our sins, amen. 
And he rose from the grave, amen. Amen. Taking the sting of death away, amen, from all who choose to receive him as Lord and Savior, amen. And now that those who have chosen to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior continue, glory to God, to prepare the way, amen. Prepare the way, amen. We should all be preparing the way. This is, should be a personal, uh, we call lesson for us all, amen. We all should be able to take a personal account to where we find ourselves and preparing the way, amen, for Jesus Christ, amen, return, amen, amen, as we are filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, guided, amen, by God to do the things for his own will, for his own pleasure, amen, not our pleasure. And not our will. Amen. Glory to God. What are we doing to prepare the way? Amen. How are we preparing the way? Glory to God in our homes. How are we preparing the way in the church? How are we preparing the way on our jobs? How are we preparing the way? Glory to God. Uh -huh, in the grocery store. How are we preparing the way? Glory to God. This is a wonderful lesson. I love this lesson. Called to prepare the way because... You know, I know that we all can get something, amen, from this and take it personal, amen. It's not about an individual or uh, an individual position, amen. We've all been given a charge, amen. And we should all be charactering Jesus Christ in all that we do all the time, amen. I pray that this lesson was a blessing. Are there any questions or comments in reference to the uh, Sunday school lesson this morning as we came out of Matthew, the third chapter, the first through the 12th verse, titled, Being Called to Prepare the Way? Uh -huh. Elaborate a little bit more on the stone. All right. Which, which uh, verse were we on here? Well, he said he would raise up, you know, the stones if they did not. Um, let me find it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, so let's talk about it. No, I'm with you. I got you. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the scripture here. So we see here from the stone, uh, we see here that focusing is a lot of time. There's a lot of focus we're looking at from a stone. We see here it was a mindset of a people. So I made a comment about a lot of us, you know, sometimes folks that learn a verse or two and we get a little bit of beside ourselves. And I spoke a lot about self-righteousness. Amen. I, I spoke a lot about the uh, idea of how uh, the Jews, amen, seen themselves. We see the Pharisees and the Sadducees seen themselves, amen. Because, see, we see that God's will, amen, uh, 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 being complete, God's will being executed, you're not going to hold God hostage. Amen. We see here, amen, we see here a figurative, we see a, a great, vast contrast between how a seed, amen, could multiply. We see here that he's telling them that, you know, that if it be God's will, amen, he'll raise one up out of this stone, amen. You're not going to hold God hostage, amen. Is God, call, is God calling you to do something? So I'm going to say it real clear. If God is calling you to do something, if he called you to do something, if you have a position or a service that he's called you to, called you in, amen, you're not going to hold God hostage. You're not holding God up, amen. And some folks, they think that they can hold God up. They'll go and remember, or they'll go and memorize a scripture or two and throw it back at the Lord or whatever the case may be. It is God, amen. Because your heart's not right. You're not going to hold God up. And we see here a lot of times they would revert because the Pharisees and that they would revert back, you know, to Abraham, to the law. Amen. And they did not want to change. But the kingdom of God is a hand. The kingdom of heaven is before you. Glory to God. So either you're going to come in line or you're not. Amen. You're not going to you're not going to stifle and say God's uh, 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 providence, God's uh, will is not predicated. Amen. On your choice. Amen. A lot of some folks think that it's predicated, glory to God, on their choice and what they choose to do or choose not to do. 
But God will raise another one up, amen, if you choose not to do what he called you to do. Glory to God. You're in the ninth verse, it says, and I think not to say, and think not. So he's telling them in the ninth verse, and think not to say within yourselves. Even though you ain't going to say it out loud. Do you know how folks, some people, they look a little beside. You don't think not to say in yourselves. We have Abraham to our father. Hey, that's all you need. <laughs> For I say unto you that God is able uh -huh, of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You know what I'm saying? Man, how, I, mean, I mean, what can you say? <laughs> I mean, I mean that would have, you would have to dismiss that thought. Amen. I mean, is it, glory to God. Amen. We are coming short on time here, amen, this morning. I pray that you received, amen, a, um, a blessing this morning, this lesson called to prepare the way, as we are called to prepare the way um, throughout this week, amen, until, uh, as a matter of fact, it's not until next Sunday, amen. We pray that you're here next Sunday, amen, God allow you to be here, but throughout life, amen, we, I pray that you paved the way, amen, that you prepared a way, amen, man, that you example Christ, that others may see the light in you. We love you, amen, God bless you. If you want to give to this ministry, you can go to beholyministries.org uh, to give to this ministry if you so choose to, amen. And until next Sunday, our motto is, a child saved is a soul saved, plus a life. May God bless you, and we love you. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we love you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing and have done and will do, Father God, in our lives, for your glory, for your will, for your way. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I pray, Father God, that I, Father God, along with others, continue to submit, Father God, in such a manner, Father God, as to be a light, Father God, as to be the salt of the earth, Father God, for your good pleasure. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for attending this awesome service. Please join us via Facebook or YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom. And First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again, and may God bless you.